Hi guys, welcome back. It's Don Wazzy here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make the horizontal tracking scenario in the Scavok aim trainer. This has been requested by a lot of people so I decided to do a tutorial on it. Uh, I just want to say that if you want more tutorials like this please let me know in the comment section and also I want to thank everyone using my supporter creator code which is donwazzy underscore btw. I appreciate you all, love you all, and let's get right into the video. Thanks, guys. So, first of all, what you're going to need is these items right here. Uh, cre we're going to need a creature manager. We're going to need a creature spawner. A trigger device. Speed pad. A damage volume. Ramp. Uh, floor. And obviously, a uh, wall. So first of all, we're going to go through all the settings of the devices, one by one. So starting with the creature manager, you want to make the creature like a busty one, like one that shines or... So I always choose the red fiend or something along them lines, something that shines. And then when it comes to the health, you can set it to 1000 or 1500, depending on the height and... Yeah, depending on the height and scale of your horizontal tracking scenario. Uh, I also put the scores to 1 so you get a score for killing them. All these I leave on default and movement speed I put to very slow. It doesn't really make a difference because they won't be moving by themselves. Then when it comes to the creature spawner, I have obviously the same creature as what we've used in the creature manager. One creature, infinite spawn limit, wave timer is 1 second. The activation and despawn range doesn't really matter. Um, I, I, well, it kind of does. I kind of like to keep them high so the zombies don't despawn on you when you get too far away. Um, but we will be activating and deactivating the zombie with a trigger device. So um, just set these on the highest and yeah, you don't have to worry about them. Despawn type, distance to enemy. Invincible spawner, we have that on. Spawner visibility, we have that off. Damage spawner after spawn, we have that turned off. Destroy structures at spawn location off. Spawn effects visibility off. Max spawn distance is a quarter of a tile. Spawn through walls is off. Preferred location is at max distance. Enable that game start. We have that off because we will be enabling with a trigger. And then when it comes to these two, the well, these three are your most important. This is the channel that you enable with. So that's technically your on switch. And then the disable channel is your off switch. So I've set them a one and two because I'm on a fresh island and I've not used no triggers. You also want to set eliminate creatures when receiving from to the same as your off switch. So um, the creature don't carry on, you know, going round when you've turned the scenario off. This also helps with FPS issues, turning your scenarios off. Next thing you're going to need is a custom uh, is a trigger device. Activating teams, activating class, any trigger by player off, trigger by damage on. Uh, by items is off, by vehicles is off, by sequences is off. Activate on game phase none. Times can trigger infinite. Uh, transmit every X triggers is one. Uh, we don't want no delay, no reset delay. I turn the sound and VFX uh, dis to disabled, but if you like the look of the vfx you can turn them on so it, you know it, it gives you like a flashy blue light which is pretty cool if you know depending on the way your map looks visible in game i'm going to set this as yes but you want to set this as no if you're making like a customizable on and off button then receive damage while invisible you need to put this to take damage otherwise the trigger will not trigger if it's invisible but we've set it to yes for the tutorial. Enabled on game start, you want this to be enabled and then just go to the bottom. When triggered, transmit on channel one, which is our on switch. And then you're just gonna wanna copy this. And then the second one, go right down to the bottom and change that to two, which is gonna be our off channel, off switch. So we have one channel one for on, channel two for off. And then we have our speed pads, which are on medium speed. Also, with the death barrier, you don't need to change anything other than um, affects players. You want to turn that to off just in case someone decides they want to jump on the horizontal tracking thing and, yeah, go die. 
and then obviously we have a ramp and a wall. So you want to if you want to start making the scenario, grab your floor. I usually do it between nine and eleven tiles, depending on our, depending on how long you want it uh, to last. So one. So we've got nine tiles there. Normally in the Scavok Game Trainer, it is 11 tiles. And then you're just going to want to put your walls down. Like so. So you've got something like that. Then put the ramp up that the zombie is going to fling off. And then cover your walls in. And then... For the second layer, or for every other layer when going up, it has to be two away from the ramp. Because if the bounce pad flashes you up, you'll end up getting stuck on... The zombie will end up getting stuck on this one. So it always has to be two layers away. So I'm just going to make... Yeah, I'm just going to make it two layers. And then it'll end over here. So, again, one, two layers away. Oh, messed up there. And then I'm going to finish it here. But you can make it higher if you want. Just keep doing... Just keep continuing with what's what, what I'm doing there. Now you're going to want to get your uh, creature spawner. And move it, like, kind of at the back so it doesn't spawn... So it only spawns on the speed pads that we're going to put down. And then obviously go into devices and get your speed pads. And your uh, damage volume. Right, and all you want to do is just go along the floors with the speed pads. Putting them on every single one. You get to the wall and put it on the walls. And then put you want to put your damage volume down here at the end, and just make sure that that um, affects players is turned off. And now what you're going to want to do is where the ramps are that that bump them up to the next level, you want to change that speed pad to high, just to make sure that they can reach the the level. And then as soon as you've done that, you want to go to your uh, zombie spawner go to where the triggers are and obviously remember your on and off button your enable you want to change that to one which is the on trigger and then change the disable and eliminate creatures to two and then what we're going to do here is just copy them like a on and off switch so I'll just put them up here right now normally in my maps I'd have like a like a you know a button that looks good type thing Obviously, we've got us on and off switch there, and then all we need to do is start the game. As you can see, that the zombie will not spawn when the game started. You have to manually shoot the on button for it to spawn. And then as you can see, it'll spawn, it'll go around the cycle, die there, and then spawn again. Anyway, I had a zombie killing me. Anyway... That's how you make the horizontal tracking uh, that is in the Scavok Aim Trainer. That is in most, if not every Scavok Aim Trainer. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, if you like the tutorial and you want to see more scenarios from the Scavok Aim Trainer, please leave me a comment, uh, leave me a like. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe with notification bells on to be notified whenever I upload a video. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.